Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another smoking hot, fantastic, action-packed, riveting episode of McNulty's Book Corral. And I am your host, Thomas McNulty. Now, if you're quite ready, today we're offering another special bonus episode for Halloween. This is the third of three Halloween episodes I'm offering in the year of the pandemic. Uh, It's a rough year, so let's get scary. Today we're talking about a very special author that I was introduced to by my daughter many years ago, R.L. Stein, and his famous Goosebump series, which I bought all of them for my daughter. We still have the originals packed away somewhere. Um, I became a a fan of R.L. Stein, and I still occasionally buy his books. So today I thought what I'd do is... At the end of this episode, I have a video I took of Stein at a a reading in Chicago. I think it was 2012. I'll put the date on it at the end. At a bookstore in a signing. And he is a great speaker. So at the end of this, you get to see him speaking himself. It's a raw video. Uh, It's not edited. It's the way I filmed it. So I'm just going to put the whole thing out there. um, And you can watch it and enjoy it. He's a great, great man and a fun writer for readers of all ages. I know the market for him is specifically for young readers, but readers of any age can buy his books. Now, in addition to the Goosebump series, of which there are many, many books, uh, a couple years ago he put out three, three, at least three independent books. He has a lot of independent books. Fear Street is out there. So he picks up on the motifs of Halloween. Here's the black cat image. and this is called The 13th Warning. And then he did Zombie Town, which is another fun little book. These are almost identical in their formula, in their writing, to the Goosebumps series. But still fun to read, a little shorter maybe. And then The Creatures from Beyond Beyond. Great cover artwork by the same artist that did the Goosebumps series. I need, I think his name is Jacobs. And uh, so these are on the market. And there's a couple others as well His his... His Fear Street series and some adult novels, which he put out, such as Red Rain, which is the one where I went and filmed him at the book release for this. And so I was fortunate to get uh, quite a few signed copies of books by Mr. Stein. Wonderful man. And you can see what his signature looks like here. Many of you are probably already familiar with his signature and his books. But for those of you that aren't, here's just a couple of recommendations. The 13th Warning and Zombie Town. All right, 13th Warning and Zombie Town. And then The Creatures from Beyond Beyond. Among other books that are not part of the Goosebump series, uh, although the, the style and the formula that he uses is identical. Uh, the Goosebump series are all still on the market. Uh, they've been reprinted multiple times. I recommend them. So a tip of the Stetson today to the remarkable and wonderful R.L. Stein, a, a great American writer. And enjoy the video. Stay well, stay happy, feed your brain, get scary, read a book. I'm especially glad to be here tonight. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a book signing in New York, and a librarian came up to the table, and she said, can I have my picture taken with you? The kids all think you're dead. <laughs> That's why I was especially glad to be here tonight. (laughs) Actually, this is true. It was a very weird book signing. The very next person in line was this young woman in her 20s, covered in hideous tattoos. Hideous. She had a dragon around her neck and snakes and just covered in tattoos. And she came up to the table and she shook hands with me and she said, you're the biggest influence on my life. <laughs> that, was, that was nice. <laughs> anyway, I'm going around place to place, just talking about myself all day long, and talking about Red Rain. But I see there are some kids, which is for adults, not for kids. Um, there's some kids here. Here's a very short story for the kids, because the rest of it will be totally boring to them. <laughs> This is a very short story called, Joe is not a monster. Joe is not a monster. Believe me, I know Joe better than anybody. Joe is a sweet guy. He is a pussycat. He wouldn't hurt a flea. 
How did the nasty rumors get started? I really don't know. Someone at Joe's school must have started them. Someone at Joe's school whispered to someone else that Joe was a monster, and the rumor spread. Now the whole school is against Joe. Kids are frightened by him. Kids laugh and point at him behind his back. The braver kids shout, Hey, monster, when Joe walks past. Then they laugh and hoot when they see Joe turn red. Someone wrote monster on Joe's locker. Because of the ugly rumors, no one will hang out with Joe. Joe eats by himself in a corner of the lunchroom. No one will choose him for after-school soccer games. He has to stand and watch the games alone on the side of the field. No one will dance with him at the school dances. Yesterday, a big kid from the upper school punched Joe really hard in the chest and said, Go away from here, monster. Joe cried all the way home. Let me tell you something about Joe. He is very hurt by these rumors. Joe has feelings, just like everyone else. Joe wants to have friends. He really wants people to like him. Joe is a nice guy. He is kind and generous. He has a great sense of humor. He can be a good friend. Joe didn't ask me to speak for him, but I am speaking out anyway. I want to set things straight once and for all. Joe is not a monster. Not a monster. How do I know so much about Joe? Well, that question is easy to answer. No one is as close to Joe as I am. No one knows Joe better than I do because I am Joe's second head. <laughs> One of the best things about doing these books all these years and you know, this is the 20th anniversary of Goosebumps. That's why I look like this. Twenty years of writing these books. But one of the really nice things is the amazing mail that I get uh, from kids. Wonderful mail. Um, here, here are a couple real letters that I got from kids. Uh, one said uh, recently, Dear R.L. Stein. I'm a big fan. I really love your Fear Street books, but I have one question. Why do they always end without making sense? <laughs> That's pretty good. Last week, here's a, here's a whole complete letter. Here's the whole letter from last week. Dear R.L. Stein, you are my second favorite author. <laughs> That's the whole letter. That's it. Dear R.L. Stein, I am your biggest fan. Your family and friends are proud of you, no matter what anybody says. <laughs> Dear R.L. Stein, I love your books, but I'm having trouble keeping up with them. Do you think you could stop writing for a while? <laughs> so, nice to get such encouragement from your readers, right? And then maybe you've heard me tell, this is my all-time favorite letter from all of them. This is my all-time favorite. Dear R.L. Stein, I've read 40 of your books, and I think they're really boring. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of perfect. Oh my gosh. It's a perfect letter.